Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Westies Angling. You're joining me at Lakeside Fishery again today. And before we go and have a look at the lake, I've just got paid, it's £10 for two rods. I am gonna be fishing with two rods today. I'm probably gonna have one rod out on the method feeder and the other one, probably later on in the day, we're gonna be getting the baker's dog biscuits out and we're gonna be doing a little bit of surface fishing, hopefully. It's meant to be really hot today. I think it's meant to be about 26 degrees. So I'll talk you through the process of why I'm picking the peg that I'm picking based on what the weather conditions are gonna be like. So I've got some of my stuff out of my car here. Um, I'm probably just gonna take a couple of things down, have a walk around the lake, and then we'll bring the rest down after that. If you're wondering why my dad's not with me today, his back's playing up. So uh, he's giving it a miss this week. So I'm on my own today. It's gonna be a chilled day's fishing, and we're gonna see if we can catch a few fish. Right folks, let's go and uh, take some stuff down and have a look at the lake. I'm going to walk around the right hand side of the lake first and the first thing I want to check out is the bay that we fished last time. I'm looking for any movement on the water, any signs of activity. There's nobody else here yet, which is brilliant. It means I can have a proper nosy. Just fell down a hole then. I can have a proper nosy and see where I fancy. The island swim looked really productive last time. There was a guy fishing that swim and uh, he had probably about as many fish as we did on the last session. However, the reason I kind of fancy fishing this little bay again is it'll be easy fishing with dog biscuits in a bay because it's nice and quiet. Your dog biscuits aren't going to be drifting into anybody's swim. Now, that's another problem with today is it's very, very... What's that? It's very, very still calm which is never good especially when it's warm just seen a little bit of activity there i think a bit of topping some bubbling coming up there i'm not sure guys what do we think which peg should i choose should i fish the bay like i did last time or should we fish round here near the island and those reeds? Some bubbling coming up there just off the island. There's more activity, I think, around this side, or at least there seems to be. Oops, God, fell in. So I could have a rod to them reeds down there on the left and then fish towards the island. Suppose somebody could go there, but that peg's a little bit treacherous. So I'm thinking, here's a good shout. Because what I would probably do is have the method feeder over to the island and probably start off on two method feeders and have a method feeder down towards them reeds Okay folks, I think I've decided I'm going to try somewhere different and I'm going to give this swim a try near the island because like I said, the bloke that was fishing this swim last time was doing really well. So I'll probably have a rod over to the island and a rod down this left hand side here. I'm going to start off on two method feeders and then a little bit later on when it warms up, I'll swap onto the baker's dog biscuits. But I've seen loads of fish topping. I spooked a big fish down here next to these reeds as well. So uh, we'll get some bait in there and uh, hopefully we'll pick a couple of carp up first thing on the bottom before it starts getting warm and they start cruising. But I think for surface fishing, that little bay down there would probably be better. It looks shallower, but at the same time, I can imagine the, the fish cruising around this island as well. So I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. I think this is the best of both worlds. So I'm going to bring the rest of my stuff down. There's plenty of bubbling coming up. I'm getting really excited to get fishing. I'll get my rod pod set up. We'll get the method feeders on and we'll see if we can get a few fish early doors. But look at this absolutely beautiful setting. 
it's 20 past six in the morning it's just turning light fishing's dawn till dusk here at lakeside and i will put the address in the description for you if you wanted to give it a go um some of the pegs are a little bit treacherous it could do with some it could do with a little bit of maintenance this fishery but it is absolutely lovely and some really good chunks in here to target right i'm gonna go and get my stuff down i'm gonna stop waffling and we'll get set up i am so torn you know between <laughs> fishing the island peg and fishing the bay because I've just had a walk around now back to the bay and there's loads of fizzing going on loads of fizzing which is a pretty obvious sign of feeding carp I'm going to be fishing on bite alarms today it's going to make it a lot easier filming this is where they were fizzing see all the little bubbles on the surface you might not be able to pick them up on the GoPro so torn but I'll stick to my first choice let's try the island swim let's have a change We've got to try new spots, guys. <sighs> really fizzing. <laughs> got to try new spots. You've got to test out different swims on a lake. I know that we're creatures of habit and it's very easy to stick to what you know. And it might be that you don't have such a good session, but who knows, you could have a better session. You literally don't know until you try it. But these reeds here, this is what's appealing to me. But the problem is with this peg, I mean, I suppose I could fish here. I don't really think it's a peg. I think it used to be, but there's loads of stuff, loads of snaggy bits of bulrush and stuff like that. But we can fish. A rod just to the edge of these there's no pegs here in between carp top in there to the island hey oh fizz in there as well just out from me brilliant look at that do you see that that is feeding fish right let's get a rod on that spot quickly so rod pod set up there going with trusty 8mm pink wafters because that's what they seem to like the last session here I've already got a hook length on using a size 12 hook to 9 pound hook length there we go check my rods together right check my drags okay let's loosen that off a touch and I'm going to put this, I'm going to start off down that margin there, just out from them reeds. And then I'm going to get another method feeder rod out and have one over to the island. And I think that'll give us our best chance for a carp this morning. So predominantly carp fishery. Oops. <laughs> right over that reed. <laughs> Got a bit excited then. <laughs> Rather than setting my other Grace Prodigy rod up on the method feeder, because I've already got this set up for surface fishing, so this has just got a hook length of eight pound quarter cruiser control to a size eight feeder hook. So I'll be free lining the dog biscuits when I start, but that's already set up for that. So it's pointless me changing that onto a method feeder. So I'm just gonna stand that up there out the way. And I'm literally just gonna put one of my feeder rods on the bite alarm. A little bit unconventional, I know that, and it's gonna look a bit weird, but it is what it is so i'll just stick that on the other bite alarm and like i said it's going to look a bit odd but it is what it is it's only for a few hours until we swap onto surface baits oh my god well that puts an end to surface fishing <laughs> oh my god look at all the ducks Right, well, good job we're setting both feeders up anyway. 
so that's good to go if you're wondering what i'm using here on the method feeder this is just my unthawed freezer absolute shit mix of everything that i've uh, been using on previous sessions i like to use it up at this time of year uh, i just have it frozen and i defrost it the night before but that's got dead maggots in it's got corn it's got pellets um and a tiny tiny bit of ground bait that's it they don't really like using ground bait there but it's predominantly pellets in that anyway so it's not going to be polluting the water and uh, plenty of natural baits for the carp to be picking through i've just put a little bit of uh, cordagoo in as well just to pep it up a touch and this one i'm just going to flick out towards the island i've already put pink wafter on i'm going to be sticking with pink wafters on both rods today I'll do just off the island and then I'll probably work closer to the island as I go that's got a bait runner on this reel and these Preston gripper rear rod rests will hold these secure hopefully we manage a couple put them somewhere where I'm not gonna lose them tidy up a bit look at this morning now i'm really not scared of moving at all so if we don't have anything in the first couple of hours while it's still quiet then i will move down to the bay seeing as everything's already set up it'll just be a case of um just carrying it all down it'll only take a couple of trips but i think the reeds are going to be our best chance for a carp today tight into the reeds water's still calm which isn't good you want a little bit of a ripple on now there's a ripple on at the moment just because of all them ducks landing <laughs> that looks like a good peg there guys see where that big tree is because there's no pegs to the left hand side and there's not really any pegs to the right hand side either so you've got that whole area to yourself the only problem is it'll be a bit tricky casting with that big tree because it goes right over the top of the peg but those reeds there there's loads of bubbles coming up just off them reeds and just out from that peg as well i've not had any indications so far i've just had a recast the only problem with this peg is the sun's not hitting it usually the pegs that do well first thing in the morning are the ones where the sun hits hopefully it stays quiet today and it's not too busy like i said that way we can move down to the bay when we start surface fishing because what tends to happen on hot days is the fish will push back to the quiet corners to the quiet bays and they'll all cruise around and they're much easier to target off the top so this is probably going to be our last warm spell for the year so i really wanted to make the most of it with the uh, the dog biscuits and the float of fishing one because i've got some that need using up <laughs> and two we won't get a chance now i think this is going to be our last warm spell we're into the start of september and as soon as you get towards the end of september into autumn then obviously the temperatures start dropping but that's the best time for fishing in my opinion let's have a little bit of a twitch on the rod tip then that could go around soon just when them temperatures start dropping down to 15 16 degrees even even as low as 10 the fishing can be really really good for carp they're all trying to pack on the weight for winter so the carp fishing can be very good especially on commercials and all the fur weather anglers tend to stop fishing through autumn and winter so it's always dead quiet on the banks and i just love a peaceful day hardly any people on the lake sometimes you've even got the lake to yourself which is absolutely brilliant you can really choose your spots and have a really peaceful session so if you're uh, not normally one for autumn and winter fishing please give it a go even if the weather's bad just make sure that you take your brolly with you you uh, obviously get the correct waterproofs and stuff like that but definitely not going to need them today it's going to be blazing hot look at that view nothing better than this is there got a piping hot flask of black coffee the sun's just coming up all the wildlife's about you literally can't ask for better than that can you people ask me sometimes you know why i like coming fishing and this is definitely one of the reasons just being outside it's just about the peace the tranquility watching all the wildlife go about their lives there's literally nothing better and hopefully getting a fish or two <laughs> but 
it's not looking promising so far okay folks so i've been fishing for about an hour and a half with absolutely no indications which isn't a good sign at all so i've made the decision to move down to the bay just organizing my stuff don't be scared of moving guys obviously don't be moving every two minutes but if you've got a feeling that the swims are just not going to be productive don't be scared of uh, getting your stuff together and having a move early doors it can make the difference between a good session and a bad session i think it's just going to be a little bit easier surface fishing in this bay when the weather starts to warm up a touch towards afternoon but i am going to keep on fishing with two method feeders and we'll see if we have any better luck i'm going to put a rod down this right hand margin where we had some good success last time if you haven't seen that video i will put a link for it in the top right hand corner so you can watch that first and you'll get an idea of what i'm on about should go mental for these dead maggots at this time of year all right so i just need to drop this towards that tree which is where we were getting them last time there we go that's where we want to be bait runner on And then I'm going to have another rod down here, just out from that tree there, where we saw that fizzing this morning. It's going to be so hot today. It's very tough fishing on the bottom when it's this hot. And it's been hot for a couple of days, so the oxygen levels are going to be low. Which is why I'm not putting loads of pellets out and stuff. Because it'll just overface the fish. Alright, let's... Uh, Get this one into this corner here. There's still bubbles coming up there, you know. Perfect. Right on the spot, guys. Right on the spot. Let's not put them off because there's still bubbles coming up. Absolutely tons of bubbling. Just out from where my dad was fishing last time there. But it's all accessible from this peg. Obviously, there's don't look like there's anybody else turning up this morning i don't blame them because like i said when it's really hot it is tough fishing for the beginners out there especially for carp if you're not surface fishing then the chance of getting them on the bottom is very very low i'm not saying it's impossible but it is very very low your best chance is a early morning like this when it's a little bit cooler I think I prefer this setup here. I'm just, I feel a little bit more confident here, whether that's just because I caught last time, I don't know. I've got bank stick cam set up there. I'm in guys, already after the move. <laughs> just shows you, doesn't it? Bit of a west is angling move and uh, we're already into a fish. It's a good fish this. Sorry if the camera is this lad. It's in the reeds, just need to get it out. Concentrating on this because I think it's a good fish. I've lost so many fish messing about with the camera, you know. Straight into a fish after the move always go where you got guys always go where you got don't want to rush it 100% a double as you'd expect from lakeside I'm told that they go to 30 pounds in here but obviously whether you believe that or not that's another thing Fight like absolute demons as well. Here we go. Come on. There we go. In the net, first fish. Oh dear me. 
stick it over to your unhooking mat. Whew. Look at that. Absolute stonker. Wow. <laughs> Quickly hold this up to the camera so you can see. We'll get on that other fish. Absolute stonker. God. <laughs> now this is fishing. Listen to that drag go. I don't even think this one thought it was hooked. Oh my God. This is definitely bigger than that last one. Some absolute crumpers in here, guys. I just need to set this one easy because I really do think this is a good fish. Oh my god, I've just got it in a net. Woo! This is bigger than that first one. I might weigh it. I think it's a good fish. Get my weigh sling. Just wet it. Scale's westy. Some zero. Oh, look at the size of this. I bet it's about 13 pound. Look at the size of it. Look at how long it is. Barely fits on that wide angle lens. On that little method feeder rod. Right. 12 pound eight. So with the waist sling. It's probably about 12.3, something like that. <laughs> if I don't catch another fish for the rest of the day, guys, I am chuffed with that. <laughs> Angry. Angry fish. <laughs> I am absolutely buzzing. You probably tell. Well, guys, what do you think of that? Two doubles within 10 minutes of moving. A few of you were saying on the last video that um, my shit mix of frozen freezer bait doesn't work. Well, there you have it. Car park fussy guys, let me tell you. <laughs> You've just got to be in the right spot. <laughs> Absolutely buzzing guys. I'm going to overarm this because it needs to be towards the middle where them bubbles are. Look. Another feeder. Oh, I took my pink waft to that one. Hopefully it hasn't spooked the peg too much, having them two doubles. All right, placement's everything here, everything. You've got to be close to this, these reeds in this tree here. I'm fairly tight to the bank as well. Got the old level light chair with me today, so I can do a bit of sunbathing. Ah. 
can't believe how successful that was absolutely nothing for an hour and a half over there I move here and I have two fish within 10 minutes absolutely amazing fishing the same way same baits you've just got to be where the fish are oh here we are this one's gone down the lake guys he is on a one-way ticket oh, I've stopped him I've stopped him I'm fishing 10 pound mainline and 9 pound hook length for this very reason there are some units in here 100% 20s 100% got to make sure you drag set right though guys because even these doubles will snap your hook length even at nine pound especially fishing close range because your line's not got that much stretch so make sure you drag set right and take your time with the fish if they want to take line let them take line obviously give them some resistance Let them tire themselves out. They'll be grubbing around in all them dead maggots in the margin. <laughs> Bet they're loving it. Rod had only been in probably three minutes, four minutes max. I think it's another double. Easy. Another mirror cart. A lot of mirrors in here. And we're in the net. I could have literally sat in that other peg all day and not caught anything. So glad I moved. I was 50 50 on whether I was going to or not. Right. Let's take a look at this one. A de another definite double. I won't weigh it though because it's not as big as that last one this is a nice one it's not a monster but it's really pretty it's good condition nice linear scale pattern on it cracking fish but we're putting a new wafter on every single time i found that carp actually take the wafters quicker if they've got a bit of fish slime on them <laughs> whether it's just because they feel safe for doing so i don't know check your hook point pretty much every cast as well okay so quick time check we're on 10 to 9 i'm probably going to be fishing through till about two o'clock today i've got some jobs to do this afternoon so uh, i'm just fitting a bit of a morning early afternoon session in today i know a lot of you will have busy lives just like i do so you've just got to fit your fishing in when you can even if you know you get one day and uh, even if you just squeeze in a morning session so you could get here first thing in the morning i know it's tough i know it's tough getting up early i don't find it easy i was up at 5 a.m this morning i really don't find it easy getting out of bed um but you set a couple of alarms and uh you gotta really kick yourself and once you're on the bank it's really enjoyable so it's just that getting out of bed and getting uh getting all this stuff in the car the night before so you don't have to think about anything you can just make your flask and set off that's what i do anyway if this margin keeps producing fish on the right hand side again like it did last time i'll probably take my other rod out i think it'll just be too much with this one going off every two minutes so my tactics fishing hot days like today is as i've said start off on the method feeder start off on the bottom because you can pick a couple of fish up first thing in the morning uh, it's still feeding on the bottom because they'll feed through the night so you've got a good chance of getting a couple of carp first thing and then what i would do is going towards 10 11 o'clock i would throw a handful of dog biscuits out like i've done and just see what comes up for them if nothing comes up for them then keep on with the method feeder like we're doing but if you see carp coming open just picking them off then start slowly introducing more biscuits get the carp competing 
for the dog biscuits and then when they're really competing for them I would free line a dog biscuit you can use a surface controller float if they're only uh, feeding further out sometimes they won't come close in and feed on surface baits sometimes they'll be more confident further out in the lake in that situation I would use one of these now it's going to be hard because the sunlight's right on the camera but this is something called a surface controller flow so you can cast this out they do them in different weights this is just a quarter one and what happens is your main line go in all the way through to a, a swivel that goes into the end of that and then you have a hook length of anywhere between a foot and three foot with a hook on the end whether you just want to hook the dog biscuit into the hook or bread or whatever or you can also her rig it it's up to you what happens is the fish will take the hook bait the resistance from this surface controller float hitting the water or going into the water will actually set the hook or it's meant to so that's how they work getting a few twitches on the left hand side here so that's how I would approach a hot day then into the afternoon when it starts to cool down a little bit if you're doing a full day session or maybe if you just want to go for an afternoon session you can get fish on the bottom from probably about four or five o'clock onwards until dusk that's how I would approach it let's see if anything comes up for dog biscuits these are just some that um, need using up that I had left over from another session so just put a few into this bay down this corner where it's quiet nobody else is going to come here so just a couple of handfuls and we'll see if anything comes up for them but if you're wondering which ones to get it's these bakers 100% tender chunks I like the uh, the beef flavor they do beef and chicken and you want the small dog ones because these are actually really big <laughs> small dog ones and they float perfectly they've got great smell they're soft so you can hook through them absolutely perfect for floater fishing obviously if bread's allowed I'd always recommend using bread but bread isn't allowed on this fishery but surface fishing is so always check the rules and make sure that you're allowed to use floating baits before you um, start your session and you just want to keep an eye on them keep an eye on the water as much as you can just had my first positive sign of surface feeding which was a big slurp from the margin down here those floaters I uh, cast out before they've probably drifted into the margins so that's good big slurp so that's a carp coming up and taking a dog biscuit they usually slurp if they've they've settled against like some debris or if they've settled against some reeds in the margin they'll come up and they'll, they'll do a big slurp to uh, get the dog biscuit in you'll hear them doing it often you know when they're trying to get insects off the top and things like that so obviously this is just for beginners guys but I think it was tight in around this corner I might even put that method feeder down there for a minute see if we can get anything down that edge it was very unproductive last time that edge but who knows so let's let's try that let's recast this one. Oh guys this is good I don't know whether you can see this but there's a slight breeze picking up blowing into me that's what we want need that breeze to pick up get a ripple on the water blowing into this side if you want any advice on what flasks to get these Stanley flasks are absolutely awesome pretty much indestructible which is what I need because I'm a right clumsy sod so yeah Stanley flask I do recommend them also guys it's been a while since I've done a giveaway of some Westies Angling merch so to be in with a chance of winning one of these Westies Angling caps all you need to do is make sure that you comment down below and also give us a follow on the Westies Angling Facebook or Instagram account I'll put the links in the description for you also I am selling this merch if you were unfortunate enough not to win so to, uh, to buy some Westies Angling merch all you need to do is head over to www.westiesangling.co.uk Prices are really reasonable guys, I'm not here to make money off these things It's just spreading awareness of the channel and uh, getting people talking really 
also if you enjoy the videos like i said before hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell icon as well that way you don't miss another video and 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 hit the like button down below um, for everybody that does all that rubbish <laughs> thank you very much um but yeah comment down below and follow me on Wesley's Angling Instagram and Facebook for a chance to win a Wesley's Angling cap. I'm in. On the method feeder. Bite was a long time coming. I hadn't had a bite for probably 40 minutes. And then it just shot off. I don't think it's massive, but it's speeding around everywhere. Listen to that drag. Look at it. It's really not happy this fish. <laughs> it's a little angry common. Nice little change. Rest of them have been mirrors. Taking some bloody line though, I tell you. Look at it. It's fuming. Tail walked twice. I think you'll be able to hear it on the video. Absolute demon of a fish. Uh, come on, up you come. Oh no, it's not finished. Still not readily coming up for the dog biscuits. I've heard a couple of carp slurp. <laughs> swam straight into the net then. <laughs> there we go. We're in guys, we're in. Well, ladies and gents, it's actually bigger than I thought it was. It's not far off another double. It's probably just under a double. Maybe eight, eight, nine pound. <laughs> it's got the right belly on it. So I'm going to give that probably eight pound. Beautiful common. <laughs> Fought like a beast, absolutely shot off. <laughs> There's like a tunnel between these two trees over here and the wind is blowing into it and it's creating like a bit of a spread on the water which is good so it's pushing water that way and it's pushing water that way there's still carp sucking at these dog biscuits down here but i'm not actually seeing any come up a little bit closer in where i need them not a cloud in the sky sun's beaming down it's gone quiet on the feeders, as expected. <laughs> we might pick the odd one up between now and dinner, especially with this wind. I think the wind puts a little bit of oxygen into the water as well. Probably just breaks the surface tension slightly. Can't stop it. sure what to do. Right, it's stopped. I have to crank it, I have to get some line back. It's literally halfway down the lake. Must be a very good fish to steam off like that. Just cranking it in. It's coming now, it's coming this way. I think I've got it under control. Oh my God, that was a run. It's going again. What the hell? <laughs> if you was to ask me what fish I thought this was, I would say catfish. <laughs> I've never had a carp run like that before. Ever. 
my god. <laughs> you won't believe it, but it's small. A little stocky common. Oh, it's gone again. Definitely putting a bend in this one and a quarter Tesco rod. Very long, very stocky, common. Look at that. Still got loads of energy. It literally was off down the lake. <laughs> First fish I've ever had wrong like that. Apart from that time at Hall Lane when I got that mid double. But look at that. £10 two. So shy of a double. Well, folks, today's not been a very good demonstration on uh, how to use the dog biscuits, has it? <laughs> but if you do want to know how to use dog biscuits and an idea of how to float a fish and the kind of rigs and stuff, I'll put a link to a video in the top right-hand corner now to a couple of videos where I've used dog biscuits and bread off the top, and you should get an idea for the techniques. But that's fishing at the end of the day. I set out to do certain videos, and sometimes they just don't go my way. It is what it is. We do not live in a perfect world. So you've just got to take it as it is. And luckily we've had a few fish. Just picked this other method feeder rod out to recast it back out soon as it's gone quiet. And uh, this slug's wasted absolutely no time in uh, munching on this method feeder. It's huge, look at it. Almost as big as the feeder. Bet that'd be a good bait. See what I mean? Just putting some gentle pressure on with my finger there on the line. This drag set fairly tight. Ah. Broke me. Dear me. Well, folks, I'm not 100% what happened there. I think I might have just put a little bit too much pressure on the fish. Um, I was just using my finger gently on the line to try and slow the fish down. But either that or one of the last fish weakened the hook length slightly. Uh, it broke out the hook, which is usually where they do give in. Either there or near the knot. That's unfortunate. Could have been a really good fish, that. You don't know, do you? It's one of them. Um, but that was just on a one-way ticket. I couldn't stop it. It was, uh, But I had to put a little bit of pressure on it because it looked like it was going towards one of the, the pegs on the far bank. I had to give it a little bit of pressure just to stop it getting caught up around that. I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. That's fishing. Look, I'm, I put these things in the videos to show you that, one, I'm not perfect. Two, these things happen. It's just the way it goes sometimes. If somebody tells you that they never lose fish, then they're lying. Because it does happen. It does happen to the best of us. I had to move my chair back into the shade because it is absolutely scorching. And I'm going to get burnt red raw. <laughs> so for a little bit of a summary, today's not gone anything like how I thought it was going to go. I thought I would predominantly get the fish on the top with the dog biscuits, but I've not even opened the box of dog biscuits that I brought for today. I just used the ones I had left over. And I can't even get fish to come up for them. So I, I don't know why. I'm not a clue why. The weather conditions are absolutely perfect for fishing with floaters and dog biscuits. And they're usually straight up for something like that. So I've not got a clue. I didn't think I'd have as many fish as I have had today on the method feeder. So luckily we've got quite a few down this right hand margin on the method feeder like we did last time here so this peg must be very very good uh, it's producing a lot of really nice fish so i really can't complain with today's session and i'm happy to call it a day there and get packed up uh, like i said i've got some jobs to crack on with this afternoon so it was only going to be a short morning session but i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've picked up a few tips and if you have don't forget hit that subscribe button i really appreciate it I'm very, very grateful to everybody that subscribes to the channel and to everybody that comments. 
pretty much on every single video. So once again, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next Westies Angling.